The most powerful thing that came out of the discovery of the gene immediately was the ability to diagnose hemochromatosis quickly, particularly within families. So if you've got the typical hemochromatosis gene, which is called C282Y homozygote, you've got two copies of C282Y mutation, one from your mother and one from your father. If you've got that, then your brothers and sisters are the highest at risk of having that. It's approximately one in four. I say approximately because there's a small chance that one of your parents had the full-blown disease rather than just a carrier. When you have hemochromatosis, you've got two copies of the, the abnormal genes. That's the tin man here, just shown in an illustration. And if you go across with your brothers and sisters, they're, 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 if, if there's four of you, two of them are likely going to be carriers, and one of them is completely normal. People don't seem to be as interested in their brothers and sisters as they are in their children. So when you tell them that they have genetic hemochromatosis, they're mostly interested in their children. Now the risk to the children is actually quite a bit lower because it means that the other partner has to have hemochromatosis in their family. So this is an important concept, that you can have a brother or sister who's completely normal and you can have hemochromatosis and you've got the same parents. We've estimated that the risk to a child is about 1 in 20 in a Caucasian mating. And a young girl arrives in my clinic in Frosh Week, September, that she was told to come to my clinic because both her parents have genetic hemochromatosis, and she's one of 11 children, and all 11 children have it. So that's the only family I've ever seen like that where a homozygote married a homozygote. But it's out there. But many people say, well, wh why is it that we're testing for 57 rare genetic diseases in child, in uh, newborn babies, that are way rarer than hemochromatosis? This is a, an irritating thing to people with hemochromatosis. Well, one of the arguments for that is that in hemochromatosis, like say you have a newborn baby, and it's shown to have this typical hemochromatosis pattern. So they tell the parents, that that child has hemochromatosis. They did this in France. One of the big concerns is stigmatization. So this means that that child, whenever they have a fever or a sore throat or a cough, the parents think that's iron overload. And they're going to treat that kid differently, and they're going to put the kid on a funny diet, and uh, the kid will, will be teased at school, and all this kind of stuff. And this can happen, this can really happen, that, that within a family, a child will be treated differently by their parents. And we've shown before, and I've told you this, that there are many people who have this genetic pattern who will never develop symptoms of hemochromatosis and may never even develop abnormal iron tests. So that's the reason that we're not recommending screening newborn babies. We've always taken the position that the onus is on you to notify your brothers and sisters. So if you do that and your doctor says there is no genetic test, you've got a problem. And that happens all the time. And if your doctor doesn't seem to have any idea how they're going to interpret the genetic test when it comes back, you've got a problem. Because the, the, the printout of the test result, it doesn't say this confirms this patient has hemochromatosis. It's a big, long gobbledygook about Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and recombination frequency. And by the time you read that, you feel like you've got hemochromatosis. <laughs> so the, I had thought when the genetic test came out that all my referrals would dry up because it would be so easy, the family doctors would just nail this. But the opposite has happened. It has created this confusional state that they don't know how to interpret the test they ordered. So then they're sent to our clinic. But most cities around here will have somebody who is capable of interpreting it. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a gastroenterologist. In some medical centers, hematology 
is on top of this. McMaster has a very strong hematology department that captures this. In some places, they have a genetics unit, often coming out of the pediatrics you know, department that manages this. So the bigger the city you're in, the more likely you are to be able to find a doctor.